Hello, and welcome to Witchy Woman Podcast. I am your host, Danae Sweet, and this is episode 101. Damn, that sounds crazy. So I thought I would do um, an episode to kind of end out the year in podcasting for me with some lists, like what are my favorite things um, that happened this year? Um, What did I learn? My favorite witchy things that I found this year, my favorite muggle things, and kind of just unpack it all. (laughs) Um, So um, after this episode is posted, I will put all of the lists, like not all of the lists, let me think backtrack. I will put the list of like my favorite things, um, witchy things and muggle things that you can get. I will post the links to those things. So if you want to go, um, get those things and try them out for yourself, you sure can. But first I wanted to say a couple like thank yous, not a couple, like a bunch of thank yous for some guests or the guests that have been on the show this year, people that have helped me out with the podcast. I just really wanted to send out some gratitude to these people. So bear with me. This is my first list. <laughs> okay. So I want to thank the following guests, um, Danielle Dulski, Melissa Caprio, um, Nikki Vandekar, um, the three male witches in the witch male witch chat episode. I don't want to call you out. <laughs> Abby Richmond, um, Rena Dwelly, Siren and David from Millennial Incantations and now Siren Spectacular. Brandy Burrow, um, all of the ladies in the round cauldron chat. I had so much fun. Um, let's see who else. Um, oh, Stella Reed. My dogs are barking. I gotta go check that out. Michael Herkes, as soon as I start talking, like, my dog starts barking. Stop. Fred, that's enough. Anywho. Um, who else do we have here? Um, I'm thinking, oh, Shelly Leggett, um, my daughter Maddie was on, Brad was on, Calum Turner was just on, and, uh, Kim Holdren, I'm gonna mess up your name, Kowalski, I think. (laughs) Sorry, Kim, from Clever Kim's Curios. And I also want to thank Taryn Ash for helping me out, admin, and then also a big shout out to uh, Danaby and Becca for helping me um, moderate the groups as well. You guys have helped me out so freaking much. I appreciate everything that you guys do. It, you know, of course it's been a, a hard year, shitty year. <laughs> in a lot of ways. But as far as the podcast goes, it has been an absolute amazing year. I have got to meet so many new people and connection, make connections with certain, you know, new creators. And I, I just feel very overwhelmed with gratitude when it comes to the podcast this year and and any year. But, but I, I really appreciate it this year because as you know, COVID pretty much like took everything from everybody. It made us, uh, change our lives and reevaluate things and find joy, um, where we can. And the podcast and all of you have helped me keep that joy in my life. So I thank you so very much to everyone that listens. I also want to big shout out to the coven. You guys, the Patreon supporters, the the coven members are what keeps me rolling. It's what has kept me able to actually do the podcast. And I seriously appreciate that. I lost my income as far as like my day job. And when that happened, I freaked the fuck out. (laughs) And you guys are awesome because I was able to, um, still do the podcast and contribute to my household. And that just means the world to me. I also love that you guys are such a source of support and love and, open-mindedness. It has been a godsend to have the coven to to connect with and you guys support each other and you support me and I love you all for that. I want to also thank my husband, Brad. It's not like he's going to listen to this, but I wanted to actually do a shout out. I really, really cannot imagine my life without this man. Um, He supports me through my craziest, crappiest things with absolute, I don't even know how to, he's, he's my rock. He, he will listen to me fly off the handle and freak the hell out about the silliest things. And he treats me as if, you know, 
it's valid. And I've never had that before. I've never had somebody me freak out about not being able to go check the door that I just shut. It's an irrational thing I need to do. And he's like, that's okay. We'll turn around the car. We'll go back and you can check the door. It's okay. And having the freedom to just <laughs> not hide any of my crazy, if it, if that's what you want to call it. Like, I can be weird. I can be, you know, neurotic and depressed and anxious and happy and joyful. I could do all those things with freedom. Um, and I've never had that before in my entire life. So I I love you so much, Brad. And this this whole journey has been amazing because you have been with me. <laughs> so thank you. Okay, enough of the the mushy shit. Let's get on to some of my favorite things that I found in 2020. Um, and these are things that I've like found that I could do, <laughs> as as well as like products that I found. So um, when we went into quarantine, I think it was like March when we officially like I didn't go anywhere, um, and I found uh, Crimson Sage Nursery. It is an online, like, place where you can buy plants. And they have so many plants. And I kind of went overboard. And that's what started my plant obsession, um, this year. But I found all kinds of cool plants. You can get, like, sage from Transylvania, like Transylvania sage. I got Czech lavender. Um, I, I got some belladonna plants in three different species. Um, it was just a lot of fun. And my house is now filled <laughs> with plants from Crimson Sage Nursery. I am not affiliated. I just want to make sure um, I'm not affiliated with any of these things I'm going to talk about because it's just something that I love. These are things that I liked and I wanted to share them with you. So, um, it's not an infomercial, but if you're looking for plants, like witchy plants, especially the baneful ones, or if you like, um, different varieties of sage that besides white sage, they have so many. My favorite one this year that I grew, I think was probably the golden sage and the purple sage. I loved them. They both smelled wonderful. I ended up getting pineapple sage, those two, there was a multicolored one. I can't remember what it was called. <laughs> and I got, oh, Christ Eyes Sage. I don't, anyway, that one died. <laughs> so I will try again this next season to to grow that one. <laughs> but it definitely died. I don't know what I did wrong. Um. So anyway, if you are looking for witchy plants, like this was my favorite place. I already already ordered plants that will be shipped in the spring so if you're looking to get plants shipped um go to their website and then you like look at your growing um zone and they'll tell you like when your spring plants will be shipped out so anyway that's what I got for my plant obsession <laughs> obsession um and I uh, sorry that was a beep from my computer and I don't really know what it was anyway um it is really that that site and getting my belladonna plants and my daturas and it really helped me um dive into plant spirit allies and working with the actual like essence of the plant not just the physical presence of the herb or the plant or the flower um i dove straight into <laughs> baneful herbs and and taking care of these beautiful plants and it's really really enriched my life in 2020 so I'm very grateful for that site <laughs> um what else okay so this one that I wrote down I can't even read it so I'm gonna skip it and if I can figure out what it says I'll come back hang on okay now I know what it says. It says Spilk Crafting Oracle Deck. So I got these um, cards when I think Hay House did like an, a big sale and I got them for like 10 bucks, which was great. Um, but it's the Spellcasting Oracle Deck and I'm going to butcher these names and I'm so sorry, but it's by Flavia, Kate Peters, and Barbara mm, Micklejohn Free, I think. Artwork by Elizabeth Lisbeth Chever Grassman. Anyway, these or oracle cards are like my favorite thing right now. I have, I kind of have a problem. I buy a lot of decks, um, especially if they're on 
pretty much only if they're on sale because <laughs> I'm cheap. But um, I love this deck. It's one of my favorites. The artwork is great. I really connect to the imagery, the colors, all the little subtle there's like hidden um pictures in some of them like on one of them I think it's the fertility card there's like this little um kitty cat in the background and some of them you'll find like a little leprechaun or something like that it's just I love the artwork I highly recommend that oracle deck if you like that kind of thing so um it's a deck that I bought I think in the spring and I've pretty much used it exclusively <laughs> for the entire rest of the year. I did buy a couple more um, decks. I got the kitchen, the Witch's Kitchen Oracle cards by the exact same artists or, or published, not publishers, the same creators. And then I also ended up getting the Moonology Oracle deck by Yasmin Boland. And I haven't connected as much with those yet, but I really am digging the Witchin, the Witch's Kitchen one. So if you're into herbs and kitchen witchery, definitely check out uh, Witch's Kitchen Oracle deck. The next thing that I thought... I really, really enjoyed, and this is going to sound so simple, <laughs> but I was watching a creator on Instagram. His name is the, the Witch of Southern Light. You can find him on Instagram. He has amazing content. But anyway, in one of his uh, videos, he was sharing that he puts like this, like fire, the stuff. It was like this gel into his cauldron, and then he lights it on fire, and it makes this like cool fire thing going on, like... Anyway, I found out it is hand sanitizer. He was explaining it. So hand sanitizer in my cauldron and having like intention fires and using the gel has been so much freaking fun because I love to burn shit as you guys know. Um, definitely be careful with it though because if you already have some flammable shit in there that's got, if you put uh, Vesta powder or anything else that's like an incendiary, <laughs> be careful. Um, lots of flames happen. I'm just gonna leave it at that so you might want to play with this outside or in a fire safe environment I always do mine um on either in my witch room I tore out all the carpet so now I just have a wood floor and I always keep my cauldron on um the next one of my favorite things that I got <laughs> but I keep it on a terracotta like pot bottom you know how you can get um the terracotta plant pots from like whatever your local hardware or plant store is um and you get the little dish thing that goes in the bottom to to catch all the drainage crap well I use those for um my cauldrons or any kind of my any of my incense burners and I put my incense burner or cauldron on top of that while I'm doing any kind of firework because it adds another fire safe layer and I am a klutz I'm a little bit accident prone as you guys know so it's just one more safety <laughs> thing that I added to my practice so that was one of my next favorite things was the terracotta pot bottoms that you could get um I'll make sure that I try to post pictures of all this stuff too so that you guys can see um see what my favorite things look like and if you want to get them then you can go get them anyway <laughs> but it's it, I highly recommend them I think I got them for like two bucks um I went to the garden store and they had a whole crap load of them um and I just picked up two or three of them and that's that's what I use for all my incense burners now um one of my next things that I found this year was oh, I love this store um I found sacred smoke uh herbals I think that's what it's called hang on yeah, that's what it's called. Sacred Smoke Herbals has, and this one I am an affiliate for, but I, just, I because I love them so much, that's why I applied for affiliate account. Um, they have witchy stuff. They have altar supplies, crystals. They have crystal pipes, which is badass. And they also sell legal <laughs> flower and herb, like botanicals that you can smoke and use that to enhance your spiritual practice, whatever that is, or to chill out. I absolutely love their pre-rolls um and then their dream or not dream mix it's a sleepy time mix and I mix that with a little bit of CBD and it, man it really relaxes me I have um muscle cramps a lot in my back I don't know why that's part of my lupus symptoms when I have a flare-up I get really really crampy in my back like where my adrenals are and when I smoke this stuff it really chills my body out so um 
I found that like halfway through the year and it has been a godsend. It's been a crappy year as far as stress goes and stress triggers um, more lupus flare-ups for me. So it was pretty painful. And then um, I got shingles, which fuck shingles. <laughs> um, and having those different herbs to to smoke, to defeat, you know, I actually put some in a burner and I burnt some as incense. It really, really helped me cope with pain um, and anxiety a lot. They have one that's just called moon dust that is absolutely beautiful for anxiety. If you have anxiety attacks or anything like that, um, it also relaxes you like my body. My The way it affects me is it re- relaxes my body as well. So I actually got that one specifically for anxiety attacks and it has worked great for me. I also have found that it really enhances my my practice, my spiritual practice. I will meditate um, really deeply, probably like once a week in addition to my regular daily meditations. But for that really deep one, I have been using the a couple of the different pre-rolls that they have with some botanicals in it to kind of help me reach that silent mind, open energy type feeling that I'm wanting. And it really has helped me connect to my, uh, my spirituality this year. It's kind of took it up to a different level. And for those of you that have like been, um, a witch, a pagan or, or spiritual for quite a while, it, it like, I was getting to the point where I was kind of like in a, in a plateau or a slump. Cause I feel like it's an ever, a never ending journey spirituality in in my practice. So when I found this stuff, adding it to my practice and being able to work with the plant allies of what is in these uh, pre rolls and their uh, burnables mixes has really helped me reach a different level. I guess I'm not saying it like changed my life <laughs> or anything like that, but it didn't. It definitely um, did change my practice in the way I connect. So anyway, it's just something fun. It's more of an indulgence for me. Like it makes my rituals feel special. I mean, I guess that's, I think when Calum did my hand reading, we were talking about me liking the decadent things and overindulging. And that has been my, one of my overindulgences this year is the, the stuff from her site. (laughs) Anyway, moving on. Um, my books, uh, Okay, so I was trying to narrow down what my favorite books of the year were. And honestly, it's so hard. I picked three. Um, And I've read more than three, but these are just the three that I find myself going to my bookcase and like pulling them out and referencing them or um, rereading bits and pieces. So I wanted to give these guys a shout out. So we've got Psychic Witch by Matt Warren, uh, Seasons of the Moon and Flame by Daniel Dulski, and Glam Witch by Michael Herkes. I absolutely loved all three of these books. I did interviews with them. So this is not me being biased because they wanted to be on my show, <laughs> but these are books that I, I seriously love. If you are, um, a new witch, an old witch, an in-between witch, whatever. Psychic Witch gives you everything from the basics moving forward. It it helps you develop your intuition while weaving that into your craft. I really, really loved that book. Um, the Seasons of the Moon and Flame. The words, like she, I love the way she writes. It's so freaking, it's like, so sensual that it drips like I don't know how else to explain her books but to me it's like an entire book of poetry and when I'm feeling um honestly (laughs) when I'm feeling like woe is me and I'm kind of depressed and I just feel like diving into a you know a hole um I will pick up that book and start reading the, the way she speaks about things and it will help me come out of my funk. It reminds me of the powerful person and witch that I am and it has helped me pull me out of a funk many times this year. So I'm very grateful for that book as well. And then we have the glam witch. Uh, I, I love Lilith. She is one of the goddesses, as you guys know, if you've listen to the podcast very long. Lilith is one of, um, the deities that I absolutely, um, 
I respect, I honor, and she, you know, I work with her in my practice. And when I found this book, um, I was really surprised on how much, like, I wasn't doing that was involved with Lilith. So it taught me a whole lot. It gave me how to weave it into my spell work. I use his way of opening and closing a circle all the time now. The words that he uses are absolutely beautiful. And the the way he wrote the whole thing just made me feel like a powerful badass bitch witch when I got done with it like I wanted to put like six inch heels on and you know in my my witch hat you know from Halloween and like strut up and down the street and be like whatever bitches like it really was empowering so if you are looking for knowledge about Lilith and how to honor her I highly recommend the book okay next thing so if you guys do book of shadows if you have any kind of grimoire or whatever and you're looking for a larger one to like fit everything in it I found book of shadow um three ring binders on zazzle.com I'm not affiliated with them um, but I was looking for a new book of shadows because I accidentally washed mine you know boo um but it gave me the opportunity to find something way bigger that would last a lot longer. And I found tons of creators on Zazzle that made, specifically made, Book of Shadows binders. So they're beautifully, like, the art on them is really pretty. I actually got one that I could customize. So my name is on the back of it. It just is so cool. So now I have so much room like so much room for new spells and rituals I can fit everything in there and I'm kind of a nerd about my my materials my my research and everything so I can have like a section for my spells and then subsections for those I have a section that I have just for uh, prayers and meditations that I like I have blessing section I've got a whole like the entire back I'm filling up with deity information so like information about the deities that I work with um, like rituals that I've done with them or for them um, I have a whole section that I've been filling with deity information and then I have the sabbats and how I I have um how I have celebrated the Sabbaths and um, what, what I do there, because this is kind of, I don't know if this is weird or not, but so every Sabbath I try to do a different kind of ritual or whatever um, if I feel like I can, like if I don't have enough energy, it's whatever. But when I can, <laughs> I like to write down the ritual and put the date up at the top when I did that ritual first. Um, and then I keep them in the Sabbath section of my Book of Shadows. So there's just so much freaking room in there. I had mine in like a really small, like pleather bound, not leather, but it was pleather, <laughs> um, smaller, like it looked like an appointment book, but it wasn't. It had lined paper in it and it was great. It's pretty, but this thing is giant. It's badass. And I can see this thing lasting for a very long time. So if you're looking for a new uh, book of shadows or just some really badass binders, go ahead over to Zazzle. <laughs> Again, I'm not affiliated. It's just shit I really, really like and I wanted to share. Um, another thing that I found kind of late in the year were these microdose truffles from Emporium Black. Oh my God. They are one, they're chocolates. And then he puts like micro doses of baneful herbs and things like that in them to enhance a spiritual ritual practice or for um, just enjoyment. But I really, really love them. I bought probably way too many of them. <laughs> um, I've only tried one. I tried the Sun Opener Datura truffle um a few weeks ago and oh my god it was a beautiful experience it's not like you're like running around tripping balls on mushrooms or something it's it's a very beautiful experience like I felt so warm I felt loving and gentle I felt like the trees were like breathing with me but not in a trippy way it was just really beautiful and I needed to connect to nature and that is the intention I had was to connect to nature and work with a Datura plant spirit so if you are into um chocolate because I am <laughs> um 
I really, really like them. He has a shitload of varieties of stuff, and he ships super fast. So I actually got two different two different shipments. Um, and if you get them, keep them in the fridge in a, like a airtight container. I know that I don't know if he has that on his site, but I it was recommended to me by someone else who who buys those truffles, and um, it keeps them really, really fresh. Working. Um, working with the plant spirits like earlier you know I was talking about the nursery and how I got all these baneful plants and then finding him and his website later on helps me like add another layer to my intention work when I'm working with plant spirit allies and um weaving that into my magical practice like it's really really it's been something new and different and I really like it so if you're into that stuff go to emporiumblack.com I am not affiliated with him in any way I just love his shit um another thing (laughs) this is gonna so uh, I don't even I probably shouldn't even share this okay so the two things that have been like my favorite comfort foods this year because I have totally gained the 20, the COVID 20 is what I've called it. Like I gained 20 freaking pounds this year. It's not good. But anyway, I'm happy. (laughs) I digress. Okay. Tang. If you are a Gen Xer or um, millennial, I am sure that you know what Tang is. It is an orange drink. And when, when I was little, um, I remember like the advertisements was all about how the astronauts drink Tang up in outer space and because the space program was really big when I was young. Um, So Tang was like this special thing that I got to drink that the astronauts drank or whatever. I don't know. I really loved it as a kid. And this year we saw it. I went to grocery shopping early this year and I saw it in our little tiny hometown store and had to snatch some up. And I have been drinking it the entire year like literally right now that's what I'm drinking (laughs) while I'm doing the podcast and the second thing this is embarrassing so um I love cup of noodles (laughs) that has been my comfort food like Brad knows if I'm up like if he leaves the house and he knows I'm kind of in a shit mood or I'm just not feeling very good today he will go bring he will go get me cup of noodles specifically I love the tortilla flavor and he will get me some chocolate with that. <laughs> I will sit on the couch and, you know, munch down my cup of noodles while sipping Tang. And then I'll have, um, he likes to get me the almond Hershey's <laughs> chocolate bars as, as like my dessert. I know, totally not healthy. It's terrible, terrible, terrible health <laughs> food choices. But I have eaten so many freaking cup of noodles this year. <laughs> I don't even know. I panic bought at the very front of um, COVID. I ended up, I ended up going online on Amazon and buying like a carton or a case of it. So I had like I don't I don't remember. I think they went in a came in a case of like twenty four, and I bought two of those. So I I had fifty cup of noodles in like March because I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to get them from our hometown store and I didn't want to buy them out of all of their shit. So yeah, I have, I've eaten a lot of cup of noodles. I'm 41 years old and like that has been one of my staples this year for food has been cup of noodles and, and tang. So um, if you like a fruity orange drink, go get some tang and yeah, cup of noodles is good. But I love that tortilla flavor. It's so good. It's got a little bite to it and then I stick hot sauce in there with it. So then it's like just snaps. I really, really freaking love it. Okay, so my last favorite thing I want to talk about is uh, Canva. So Canva.com is how I create most of my graphics for social media. But there's also a really cool function on there. You can print out. They will like send you prints of whatever you want. So like if I go on there and I make a really cool picture that I love that has to do with like say I, I found a picture of Pan on the internet and I really really love it and I want it as like a poster or a print or whatever to stick in a frame you can print you can buy them right there I think the last one I bought was like an 8 by 10 um poster and it cost me four dollars so that has been so fun I like have made different art projects on the computer and or scan some stuff in of my old stuff and I've 
put like dollar store frames on them. So I, I went to the dollar store a few months ago and got like a crap load of those little, I think they were $2 a piece. They're just plain black frames. And I spray painted them gold because my witch cave was black and gold. And I put a bunch of different prints inside there and it was cheap. I didn't have to use my printer ink because I swear to God, as soon as I, two pictures and my printer ink's like, you need more ink. And I'm not trying to pay 50 bucks like every few months just for printer ink, I think it's ridiculous. So anyway, $4 was totally worth it and it shipped really fast. So if you're looking for art to decorate your room with or your altar space, that is, it's really great. So it's canva.com and I, I've had so much fun with that app this year, but I thought other witchy people might find it a, a fun creative outlet as well. You can print off things that you make. I, anyway, I'll stop. <laughs> stop I'm rambling but I love that site and I thought maybe you guys would too okay I also wanted to share with you guys um things I learned in my practice I think that a lot of the elder witches <laughs> um, um we tend to I don't know I don't think I do but I get enough messages that anyway I feel like sometimes the way I portray myself on social media lends to some preconceived notion that I have learned all there is to learn and I, you know, I've ascended to like Elder Witch and that's all there is. I'm constantly learning. There's a lot that I don't know about and my practice is ever evolving and I wanted to share with you guys my personal practice and the things that I learned this year um, because I'm, I'm, I guess, considered an elder witch. I'm old and I'm a witch. <laughs> I've been a witch since I was in, you know, early, early years. So, um, I wanted to share with you guys that I'm always learning and these are the things that I learned this year. So, because of COVID, 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 I really wasn't, um, able to go and like shop the witchy shops that I like, um, that are kind of local. I wasn't able to get that stuff. So I learned that I can do um, pretty much all of my craft by using shit I have in the kitchen. Like I, the stuff that I already have and that, um, sometimes the simple, the simple spells with not all the shit mean a lot more to me. And I'm, I can be super exact, you know, extravagant with some of my, my rituals and spells that I do. And I, and I've been that way. And that's just who I am. I love, I love all the glitter bombs and the fun colors and, you know, all the, you know, gazillion <laughs> ingredients to an incense. I love that shit. But this year I learned that I can do magic. I can do witchcraft. I can honor my pagan, um, deities without all the shit. So, um, that's something that I really, really have weaved into my practice this year is kitchen witchcraft. It has been something that is pretty much a daily thing now. I'll do, um, you know, add ingredients into my food with intention, the thing, the herbs that are in my cupboard. Um, I will use that for incense. I, I put, you know, do an intention boil. I, I've done all kinds of cool stuff in my kitchen this year, more than I ever have. And that's thanks to COVID. I mean, COVID's a fucked up time and I hate it, but <laughs> because I wasn't able to go out and go shopping, I did learn a lot about um, my abilities to work with the simple shit. Um, another thing that I learned this year in my practice is that I am human and shit happens. <laughs> if I'm unable to, you know, honor a, a Sabbath or do a spell that I really wanted to do on a specific day and moon phase and whatever, and I can't because I'm hurting or I'm exhausted or I'm whatever it is, my mind is fucked that day. Um, it's Okay. Like before, like even last year, I, I forced myself to do things. I mean, I did do the lazy witch thing quite a bit towards the end of the year, but it still irked the shit out of me. I would just, I would skip stuff. And then I felt like I had that witch guilt. I'm like, oh my God, I'm a bad witch. Bad shit's going to happen because I didn't worship this. Um, I didn't help honor this specific uh, deity on the, their day or whatever it was. Um, 
This year, um, I do what I can. And when I get to do things, when I do feel good, it makes it that much better because I'm not forcing myself. I'm doing it completely because I want to, not because I have to. And that's something that I have finally become comfortable with. I've tried to practice that for a year or two and I, and I did, but it's not like I was comfortable with skipping things. This year, I'm comfortable with it. Fuck it. <laughs> It's what it is what it is and I am human um, and it took me a very long to get to that point um, so that's something that COVID also taught me because um, I have been inside a lot it's affected my health I've had a really shitty health year I have yet um, I shouldn't even say it because I'll probably get it but um, I don't have COVID yet so um, knock on wood so I but the rest of my year has just been really hard on, on my body on my on my physical health so, <clears throat> anywho, I'll stop talking about that. <laughs> I'm so tired, you guys. I cannot, I don't know what's wrong. I keep waking up at like 3 o'clock in that, um, I think it's been 3 or 3.30 um, for like four nights in a row. The night of the conjunction, so the night before last, I woke up at like 1 o'clock and didn't go back to sleep. So, I'm just really tired. So, excuse my like bouncing around <laughs> And, um, my babbling. <laughs> um, something else I learned this year that took me forever to learn is that I don't give a fuck who sees me meditating in my yard or talking to my trees. Like, <laughs> when we first moved to town, I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna see me saging things. Like, or, oh, they're gonna see me doing a spell outside and I didn't want to meditate outside because I had nowhere private. Dude, I don't even, I don't care. They can look at me, make fun of me. I just, whatever. That's their thing. This is my thing. They can go suck a fart. I don't care. <laughs> and, and I think that that's, it's just great. It's a whole new level of freedom that I found because I don't give a fuck. Um, I was outside during, um, during the day yesterday for, for some of that sun during the, con- you know, the conjunction of the planets. I have saged my entire property. I'm not saged. Um, I actually use your basanta or rosemary. But anyway, I've done that stuff outside. I did an entire spell out my front door. It is what it is. They, they, whatever. I can be their entertainment for the day. If it makes them smile, then yay. <laughs> right? Um, so it may not seem like a big thing, but it has been for me because it, it gave me freedom to live here because the, one of my things that I hated about being here in town is that I couldn't go outside and do my spells or meditate or hug a tree or talk to my trees without people seeing me and it really held me back. And this year has taught me I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> so um, if anyone can embrace that shit, trust me, it is, it's, that was life changing. <laughs> um. Anywho, uh, another thing in my practice that it is, it's taken me a really long time to get to this point. The beginning of the year, I kind of set an intention to try to get comfortable with working with a male deity. And that wasn't a specific one. I just have a lot of baggage and being close with a male deity just didn't seem appealing. But it was something that's missing from my, I felt missing from my personal uh, practice because I wanted, I wanted more of a balance. Um, so it took till Samhain, but I finally got to be close with a male deity. They came to me and I've been working on developing a relationship with them. I have not asked anything of them. I've just been honoring them, researching, meditating, and asking them to be present. Um, just that kind of thing. And it's been great. I love being around that energy. It's definitely made me feel, um, more motivated. It's added that sun type energy into my life. And I think that's what I was really missing and I just didn't know until I got to experience it. And that's been something that's been so special to me this year. And, and it took me this long <laughs> to be able to be comfortable with, um, to, to work with a male deity. And, you know, for me, that's, it's a huge deal. And I am so grateful that 
I was able to, you know, work through my shit and one came forward so that I can experience it. So I, I've got a lot more crap that I wrote down, but really that's, those were the most important things about this year. Um, and I just wanted to share them with you because you are a part of my journey. Um, it's, you've become like, (laughs) <laughs> sounds silly like speaking into this microphone has been some of the best therapy I've had <laughs> like I love Bob and I love our sessions and they definitely have been life-changing for me to be able to go to therapy and you know be on antidepressants that has changed so so much but this podcast talking to you interacting with you guys online um you make me feel like I'm not, you know, I don't even know how to word it. I'm not like the crazy odd person. I'm just me. And you've made me feel like it's okay to be just me. And lastly, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm taking next Tuesday off. (laughs) I, I think I might've taken one Tuesday off when I got really in a bad mental state, maybe this spring. I can't remember. Might have. But anyway, I, it's not because I'm in a bad place. It's because I really want to spend some time with my family. Um, we haven't had the best year as far as family goes. Um, there's been a lot of ups and downs and Maddie gets some time off and I would really like to spend it with her and Brad and really be present. And, um, I'll be on social media. I'll still be checking my stuff. Um, I'll still be able to interact with you guys. I'm just not going to do a podcast that next Tuesday. I just, I feel like I just want to focus on relationships and relationships with you guys too. Online, I get to talk to you guys and I really, really enjoy it. Um, So I'll still be able to do that. I'm just going to take time off from um, the podcast because it takes a bit of time to record and edit and get everything out. And um, it's not a bad thing. I just, I just really want a week off. (laughs) So, and since, since doing my taxes, we have decided I'm self-employed now um, that um, I can take a, I can take a week off because I'm my own boss, (laughs) right? Um, So, so if you have any issues, if you would like to contact me, you can still contact me. It's not like I'm disappearing. I'm just not going to be putting out an episode that week. I will come back after the first of the year and we will tackle, um, whatever (laughs) has come, uh, by then. I have some ideas and we have some interviews planned and I want this next year to be just as awesome as far as the podcast goes as possible for you guys. So I'm going to be spending a little bit of time in my time off also planning and contacting um, people to be interviewed. If you have anybody that you would want on the podcast that you're dying to hear from, please contact me. Um on Instagram. That's the best way to get get me on Instagram, um, at Witchy Woman Podcast. You can also email me. I'm really slow at getting back to emails lately, but it's witchywomanpodcast at gmail.com. I'm on uh, Facebook as well. Um, so just look for Witchy Woman Podcast. And I will try to get these people on. If you want them on, I will try to get them on. I don't have a control, any control on whether they say yes or no, but I'll ask. <laughs> they can either want me on or want to come on or not. So um, definitely get a hold of me if you, or if you want to come on. If you are a witchy creator, if you're an author, if you are in the pagan community and have something you would like um, to be discussed on the podcast, please get a hold of me. Because I am open to whatever. (laughs) Okay, guys. That's all I have. I hope you have a beautiful holiday season. Um, Blessed Yule to those who are uh, celebrating that. If you celebrate that yesterday. Or I think people can... I think the celebration technically lasts to like January 2nd. But anywho. Happy holidays to everybody. However you celebrate or don't celebrate. Okay? (laughs) All right. Thank you so, so much. I, I wish, I wish I could do something to show you guys how much I appreciate you. Um, I'm at a loss for the accurate words. So I guess that's all I got. <laughs> so until next time, stay witchy. Bye-bye.